What's up my comic comrades and happy Thanksgiving to all of you here in the United States. All of us here at Variant hope you have a very happy holiday with the people you love. As a matter of fact, one of the things I'm sure many of us will be doing with our families this weekend is watching the Hawkeye Disney Plus series. The first two episodes released today in the series looks like a lot of fun. It features Jeremy Renner returning as Hawkeye and the show will of course be introducing us to the MCU's version of Kate Bishop played by Haley Steinfeld. So what better way to kick off the festivities than with a look at Hawkeye's comic book history and then on Friday we'll be bringing you guys the comic book origin of Kate Bishop. Tim and I will also be giving you thoughts on the first two episodes of the Hawkeye series in next week's podcast. So keep an eye out for that. If you haven't subscribed to our podcast, what are you waiting for? You could do so by clicking the link here or in the description. You might also be looking for some dope Hawkeye collectibles. Well, thankfully, our good friends over at Displate are the sponsors for today's episode. Holiday shopping is already in full swing and Displate is the company you want to check out for amazing wall art. They work with incredibly talented artists from around the world to create high quality metal posters from Marvel, DC, Star Wars, anime, gaming, and a crap ton more. In fact, Displate's catalog is so deep that you can customize and arrange your collections almost any way you want. Not to mention you could hang and rearrange your posters in seconds thanks to their easy install magnetic wall mount system. In short, every Displate metal poster comes with a mounting guide, stickers, and magnets. You just line your displates where you you want to hang them, apply the magnets to the wall where instructed on the guide sticker and mount your poster. As an example, Display just sent over these dope new Hawkeye posters for us to show you and add to our collection here at the studio. And within 60 seconds, we could swap the old ones out with these to go full holidays with Hawkeye. It's freaking amazing. You also have the ability to choose from three different sizes, medium, large, or extra large. Select a matte or gloss finish and even pick from multiple frame options. Just use our link in the description to start assembling your collection. And as a member of the Variant Nation, Display is going to hook you up with a sweet Black Friday discount. You'll get 34% off your order of one to two displays, 38% off three to four displays, or 42% off five or more displays. But you want to take advantage of that now because that Black Friday discount is only good through the end of November. Again, just click our link in the description below to scroll through some of our favorite collections and then start building your own with a deep discount. Just as a heads up, when you use our link, you'll see that discount applied once you add your selections to the cart. Also, make sure to let us know which designs are your favorite in the comment section as well. With that covered, let's dive in and see what Marvel's Archer is all about. Hawkeye first appeared in Tales of Suspense issue 57 in September of 1964. He was created by Stan Lee and Don Heck. What some of you may not know is that Hawkeye was originally introduced as an unintentional Iron Man villain who fought alongside Black Widow to help bring Iron Man down. But let me not get ahead of myself as that's all going to be explained in Origins, like right now. Before getting into Hawkeye's origin, it's important to know that his full origin was revealed across two separate titles written nearly 50 years apart. Each fill in different parts of his story, so we're going to be jumping back and forth between the two of them to give you the full origin story. Having said that, the first origin was given to us in the Tales of Suspense title in the 1960s. Then decades later, that origin was expanded upon in the 2011 Hawkeye Blindspot 4 issue miniseries. With that understood, Hawkeye Blindspot 1 is where we get a look at his childhood and how he first acquired his skill set, so let's start with that. In Hawkeye Blindspot issue 1, we see that young Clint Barton, who would go on to become Hawkeye, came from an abusive home. Clint and his older brother Barney were constantly abused by their alcoholic father. As for their mother, well, she plain and simple just didn't really care that much. But poetic justice struck when their father and mother died in a car accident due to his excessive drinking and driving drunk. After the death of their parents and with nowhere else to go, young Clint and Barney Barton were placed in an orphanage. But they weren't about that Annie style, the sun will come out tomorrow life. So they quickly escaped the orphanage and joined a traveling circus. While doing odd jobs around the circus, a couple of the circus performers known as swordsmen and trickshot took no notice of Clint and brought him under their wing. Swordsman would teach Clint knife throwing as well as acrobatics while Trickshot taught him archery, which obviously is the one he gravitated to the most. Swordsman and Trickshot would then become father-like figures to Clint and in time he began to surpass their skills. And from here we jump into his first origin in Tales of Suspense, which starts to give us the rest of his story. Basically after being with him for some time, Clint one day walked into the Swordsman stealing money from the Ringmaster. Swordsman offered Clint some of the money if he kept his mouth sealed, but Clint was all like, no thank you. So Swordsman beat him up and left him for dead. Needless to say, after this, Clint fled the circus, which only made his brother Barney mad that he left him alone. Long story short, Clint would return to his life at the circus, but this time with his own act called The Amazing Hawkeye. This brings us all the way to the Tales of Suspense issue 57. In the book, we see someone at the circus say, hurry, hurry, step right up, folks. See Hawkeye, the wonder of the age, the world's greatest marksman. But as people watch Clint hit the bullseye, they say, big deal, so we hit the target. What a crummy act. Come on, get that bum off the stage and bring on the dancing girls. Oh, the 60s. But things at the circus take an unexpected turn when the flying pinwheel ride starts going out of 
control. At which point Iron Man is alerted to this and of course saves the day by saving the people on the ride. But while everyone is rejoicing and clapping for Iron Man, the comic says, in the meantime there is one observer who feels no joy at what has happened. The only emotion he experiences is one of burning and blazing jealousy. As Clint says, I'm the greatest marksman the world has ever known, and yet they ignore me. Why couldn't I do all the things Iron Man can do? All it takes are a lot of mechanical gimmicks and a colorful costume disguise. The comic starts narrating, and so we are about to witness the creation of one of the most startling villains of all time, which as we know didn't pan out to be true, but it sounded good at the time. The comic continues to say, a short time later in a basement workshop, the brooding marksman works feverishly. As we see Clint say, I'll make myself a costume that no one will ever be able to forget. And when he does that, he puts the costume on saying, but a costume is only part of it. I'll need weapons. And what better weapons than my infallible arrows? Each with a specially fitted tip of its own. Never again will people sneer at my performance. He then puts on his mask and says, and now as most other costume adventurers choose to wear masks, Hawkeye will do the same. So that Iron Man and every costume adventurer look to his laurels. For Hawkeye is about to make them all look sick. He then sets out to start patrolling, saying, although I possess no superpowers other than my unfailing accuracy at target practice, I can do anything others can do by means of my arrows. For instance, if I should want to fly to the rooftop, I'll just use an arrow with a suction tip. He then stops a burglar, but the burglar was able to run away after dropping the jewelry he just stole. Hawkeye then bends down to see what's in the bag and says, no wonder he ran so fast. This is quite a haul. Diamonds and rubies and everything. But just then, two cops come around the corner saying, don't move. We caught your partner and we've got you dead to rights, thinking that Hawkeye helped rob the store and he's a criminal himself. Hawkeye then drops the jewelry and begins to run away, but around the corner he's picked up by a mysterious woman. The comic then says, the daring, dazzling, dangerous Black Widow. Hawkeye is immediately smitten with her saying, lady, whoever you are, don't pitch me. This is one dream I don't want to ever wake up from. Head over heels for her, he agrees to help her in her mission to take down Iron Man. Because remember, back then Black Widow wasn't initially a hero on the Avengers, much like you're finding out about Hawkeye. The two of them team up on Iron Man and Black Widow would steal Tony Stark's tech to make better trick arrows for Hawkeye to use against Iron Man. Now Hawkeye didn't necessarily want to be a villain constantly going up against Iron Man, but again, he was just head over heels for Black Widow. Long story short, Black Widow eventually ends up hurt, and when Hawkeye finds her, he says, fate always exacts her price for past deeds. There was no way to escape, my darling, but I'll make up for what we've done. I'll devote all my life to making amends, essentially promising to go straight. This brings us to the Avengers issue 16, where he breaks into the Avengers mansion saying, I come as a friend, not as an enemy. I wish to join the Avengers. I never intended to be an outcast or an enemy of society. I always wish to use my skills, my powers to aid the public, but a capricious accident of fate made the police think I was a menace. Then before I could clear myself, I met the beautiful Black Widow. I fell hopelessly in love with her. Even after I learned she was an employee of the communists, I couldn't tear her from my heart. But after she was hurt for trying to desert the Red Masters, I vowed to devote my life to making amends. He then picks up a Ty Jarvis saying, I'm going to prove my worth to all of you. You faced me in Battle Iron Man, but they haven't. This will show them my skill. I was the one who tied up your butler, so it's only fitting that I be the one to set him free. My way. As he shoots three arrows at once, cutting all of his ties. Saying, this was only a sample. I have arrows for every purpose fitted with every conceivable type of weapon. Iron Man says, the timing is perfect, Hawkeye. We've been looking for replacements. I'll give you an Avengers manual so you could study our bylaws. And with that, Hawkeye becomes an Avenger. But now that you know Hawkeye's origin and how he became an Avenger, let's move on to story arcs and publication history. Now, as I just went over, Hawkeye was first introduced to us as a villain who didn't really want to be a villain in Tales of Suspense issue 57. He would then make two more appearances as a villain in Tales of Suspense issue 60 and 64, but as we all know, would ultimately join the Avengers in Avengers issue 16, thus summarizing everything I just told you in the origin segment within a single paragraph. Anyway, after joining the Avengers, obviously he would become one of the most prominent members in the team's history. With that said, Hawkeye has had plenty of amazing story arcs over the years, but we're just going to go over some of his greatest hits, if you will, as there's no way we'd be able to talk about everything as he's had over 50 plus years in comics. Easily one of the most notable stories for Hawkeye is issue 174 of the Avengers titled Captured by the Collector. In the story, most of the Avengers have been captured by the Collector, leaving it up to Thor, Iron Man, Wasp, and Hawkeye to free their fellow Avengers. But the Collector is no punk. He's one of the elders of the universe and eventually takes out Iron Man, Thor, and the Wasp, leaving Hawkeye the last Avenger standing. Hawkeye continues to use his craftiness along with trick arrows, lots of trick arrows, to outsmart and defeat the Collector. He ultimately uses an arrow that releases a stunning electrical charge, at which point Hawkeye is able to free his fellow Avengers. After many adventures with the Avengers, Steve Englehart, the Avengers writer at the time, had Hawkeye quit the team. This lets Hawkeye joining the West Coast Avengers as a team leader and founding member in the original 1980s four-issue miniseries. The title was then made into an ongoing series that ran for a whopping 102 issues and eight annuals. Also in the 1980s, Hawkeye would get his first solo series in 1983 to be exact in a four-issue limited series. It was in this series he would meet his future wife Mockingbird and we see the two team up for the first time as well as fall in love. Issue four of the series literally ends with both of them in a heart-shaped bathtub a Las Vegas style with a caption saying, 
the beginning. This series is easily one of the most prominent series for Hawkeye in his history. I mean, not only does it set up the stage for his love interest and partner Mockingbird, it also sets up the beginnings of Hawkeye going deaf as well. You see in the series, Hawkeye and Mockingbird are fighting the villain Crossfire. And in order to counter one of Crossfire's weapons, Hawkeye uses a sonic arrow that leaves him 80% deaf. But this is comic book, so he will later be cured by Franklin Richards in Avengers Annual 2001. But that would later be changed yet again in Matt Fraction's Hawkeye run, but more on that in a bit. Hawkeye would get several more miniseries like the 1994 four issue miniseries, and even got an ongoing series in 2003 that was short lived and only lasted eight issues. But now let's jump to the 2012 Matt Fraction Hawkeye run, which is widely considered to be the best Hawkeye series of all time, and it was released on the heels of the first Avengers movie. The series gives us one of the most ground level looks at a superhero we've ever seen. Literally, it just takes us through a day in the life showing us the most mundane things, such as him getting a cast taken off his leg after he falls on top of a car, him saving a dog's life, which would end up becoming his companion, and so on and so forth. It's just a really good intimate look at Clint Barton and the persona he chooses to be, Hawkeye. The series would also make Hawkeye deaf once again after being stabbed in the ears with his own arrows in issue 15 of the series. It's actually pretty gnarly as he's taken off but then after this, the series gives us a really good look at how Clint is dealing with being deaf once again. If there's one Hawkeye story I could recommend you guys read, it's definitely this Matt Fraction run. After this though, we would get the 2015 all new Hawkeye series where Kate Bishop has teamed up with Hawkeye to form Team Hawkeye, so to speak. And in this series, Barton and Bishop race against time to save a group of innocent kids with devastating powers. With that said, some of you may be wondering how come I didn't talk about his time as Ronan? Well again, today we're focusing on the Hawkeye portion of his history, but fear not because a little while back we did an episode on who was Ronan, which you could find right here. Let's move on to powers and abilities. Now, as we all know from seeing Hawkeye in the MCU, he has no superpowers, but he is still a force to be reckoned with. He is in peak physical condition, possessing exceptional speed, stamina, durability, strength, endurance, and agility. And most notably, he's one of the best archers, marksmen, and sharpshooters in the world, thanks to training from his former mentor, Trickshot. He also has immense skill in acrobatics, performing maneuvers that Simone Biles would be jealous of, thanks to his time in the circus. Clint is a very skilled and very dangerous swordsman and martial artist. He was trained by the swordsman to throw knives and be excellent with a sword. He's also had extensive training in hand-to-hand -hand and weapons combat thanks to Captain America. Being a leader and founder of the West Coast Avengers, Hawkeye has been shown to be a fantastic strategist, tactician, and field commander, having led several teams. But again, Hawkeye is most known for his archery skills, being the best archer in the Marvel Universe. Most notably, he uses his trick arrows that could virtually do anything given that he has an arrow for almost every single circumstance. Some example of trick arrows he carries would be an acid arrow, adhesive arrow, boomerang arrow, cable arrow, diamond tipped arrow, electro arrow, EMP arrow, explosive arrow, freeze arrow, putty arrow, net arrow, USB arrow, vibranium arrow, and the list goes on for days. He's got so many. But now that you have an idea of Hawkeye's power set, let's move on to some reading recommendations. Check out Tales of Suspense issue 57, 60, and 64, Avengers issue 16, Avengers issue 174, the 1983 Hawkeye 4 issue miniseries, Hawkeye volume 1, My Life as a Weapon, Hawkeye volume 2, Little Hits, Hawkeye volume 5, All New Hawkeye, and Hawkeye volume 6, Hawkeyes. That should be more than enough to get you guys started. First up for November 24th, we have the highly anticipated Hulk issue one from Donny Cates. In this first issue of Cates' six issue miniseries, the uncontrollable rage of the Hulk has reached an all new level and nobody, including the Avengers, is prepared to handle it. One thing is for sure though, we're gonna cover the crap out of this book in the near future. Next up on this week's list, we have Gunslinger Spawn issue two. We just dropped an episode on the awesome first issue in the series, but in this issue, Gunslinger stumbles across a vicious vampire cult's plot to kill Al Simmons, who Gunslinger needs alive if he's ever gonna return Back to 1859. Third on our list, we have Deathstroke Inc. Issue 3. Deathstroke hunts the deadly cheetah to the legendary land of Cheetera. And to get Cheetah, Deathstroke must hack his way past evil witches, murderous unicorns, and an army of cat warriors. Next up, we have the death of Doctor Strange Issue 3. With no Sorcerer Supreme, Earth is left entirely defenseless against Marvel's next great mystical threats, the Three Mothers. Were they the one who killed Stephen Strange, and will they be the Marvel Universe's undoing? And last but certainly not least, we have Astonishing Times, the finale with Issue 5. This is the climax to our first comic series, and I couldn't be more excited for you guys to see how this first arc ends with our universe. It's gonna be absolutely nuts. And that's going to bring today's episode of Variant to a close. But if you like today's episode, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps the channel grow. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.